The 2022 paper published in the Social and Personality Psychology Compass asserts that much of the opposition to affirmative action comes from some members of advantaged populations who see DEIA efforts as a threat to their resources, cultural position, and or positive self-image. And that reference is in the uh, pamphlet that you have. Certainly that seems plausible when talking about cases where 20% of the available slots in college admissions went to qualified minorities, but they are deemed responsible for denying access by innumerable majority students who could not compete for the other 80% of the available slots, even assuming they were qualified in the first place. As a follow-up to my point about Edward Bloom's efforts to expand the SCOTUS decision beyond academic admissions to private organizations and employers, which could affect scholarship programs, internships, management development programs, et cetera. Therefore, a two-part question for Maria Lehman of ASCE. What do you anticipate to be the result of such an action from your perspective as president of the nation's oldest engineering society, representing more than 150,000 civil engineers employed in private practice, government, industry, and academe, and how will your efforts within ASCE change, if at all? Well, thanks for the softball so. question. <laughs> um, so let me start off with that we are a professional society. Roughly a third academicians, a third practitioners, and, um, and a third in government. And uh, when I speak to people around the country and actually around the world, this is not, I mean, I laugh that, you know, that our profession is very pale male and stale. And I only check one box because I'm pale female and still. Um, but it's a math problem. There's not enough people to do the work that we need done. And so we need to have a rising tide for all boats, period. So I think um, where I'd like to start with this, um, ASCE has had a policy since 1993 on diversity and inclusion. Um, every three years we review it and we tweak it for what's going on in the industry. And I'm sorry if you're over there, but it's like hard to see around the podium here. Um, and let me read it to you because I'll tell you what, there's a percentage that comes back after and I hear about it, right? It's, if it's really good, I hear about it. If it's really bad, I hear about it. Um, the American Society of Civil Engineers fosters so, so a... Into the okay, I got to... See it too. No. Fosters a fully inclusive culture that celebrates individual uniqueness, engenders a sense of belonging, and promotes equitable opportunity for all people to participate as members and stakeholders of the civil engineering community, regardless of identity. ASCE and its staff is committed to inclusive engineering problem solving that recognizes values and addresses the unique needs of the diverse demographic, social, economic, and cultural groups when considering, balancing, and mitigating societal, environmental, and economic impacts of our work. Um, and then there's a whole bunch of commitments. Uh, we have been talking about this for a long time. I'm frustrated. I've been in the business for 43 years. The numbers are worse. I have granddaughters, so like if you think you're angry about your, your daughters, trust me, it's worse when you have granddaughters. Um, I want it to be a better place for them. And so we have to do better. And so I think no matter what happens inside the Beltway, and I spend a lot of time inside the Beltway, and I scratch my head, I'm an engineer, it's illogical, it's hard to deal with. Um, but no matter what happens, the professional societies have a role, and we see us as kicking it up. So, in fact, as kind of a reaction to this, we have an action plan this year that we have not had in the past um, relative to, for example, if you come to our conferences, you are signing a way that you are going to behave the way we expect you to behave. Um, in the past, you know, if you're not a member, I have no way of telling you, knock it off, right? So there is a code of conduct for our conferences that we approved. We have a board policy of what is going to happen. Um, we have to look at certain venues, for example, because maybe the code of ethics at that venue isn't consistent with ours. Um, and we also, we're kicking off our convention next week in Chicago with, um, a whole topic on, it's basically called blame it on the brain, okay? The, the brain's wiring on unconscious bias against anyone. And um, it's a very interactive thing. I've done it with ACEC in the past. And you realize that you bring certain things to the table that you have to just knock it off. Um, I can tell you, um, I have three sons, okay? And I can tell you they have less tolerance for this than their wives do and two of them are engineers. I mean, the Gen X, Y, Zers have 
no patience for this whatsoever. And so we have to do this as a function of need and you know, let them do what they're going to do. I think we can end run and skirt some of the policies just by doing what we need to do to make sure that we have enough and competent, and that's gonna mean some different programs to be able to level people up. Um, but we're what, ready, willing to do that, and I know universities are too. So um, it's a little dicier on the service academies. Um, it'll be interesting to see. I mean, you're watching how women's rights issues in the Pentagon is, is you know, front page news instead of like running the country, but you know, be that as it may, I can say that. I, I don't work for the federal government. But um, it's, it's, it's frustrating that we're in this place. And so we have to use the venues and the organizations that we have to make a positive impact. Thank you. Anybody else?